It's already six months that I saw the Skoda Enyaq for the very first time at its world premiere, but today I'm allowed to drive the car. And while driving, we're going to have a closer look regarding to things like boot capacity, comfort, assistance and safety systems, infotainment, and of course, charging and range, and many, many other things. My test car is featuring the bigger battery pack, which means we do have 77 kilowatt hours NAT capacity. And that is enough for the car for a maximum range of over 500 kilometers. And um, on top, we do have the um, 150 kilowatt strong electric engine on the rear axle on board, which is, if you want, the old number 204 horsepower. And uh, that provides us on top with uh, 310 newton meters of maximum torque. And that works really well with the car. So when you drive the car in comfort and normal mode, it's just an easy, very easy and enjoyable ride. Um, if you want to push it a bit more, you just change your driving um, to S, which means sport. Then the car gets a bit more crisp, a bit more sporty, but it is not really very dynamic. It's more a cruiser than a sports car. If you want to have a more sporty feeling, I think you should wait until the Enyaq RS is available. From the front, the 1.88 meter wide Enyaq is clearly recognizable as a Skoda. The large radiator grille features the typical Skoda shape and comes with a chrome frame. LED headlights are always on board. Optionally, the so-called light and side package can be ordered, which includes Matrix LED headlights, amongst other things. The Enyaq always features a full digital cockpit, which means we do have a bit smaller one than with other Skoda as cars because we do not have anything like water temperature, oil temperature and a mobile in a, an electric car, but still 5.5 inch as standard for free. On top you get at least a 10 inch display here for the center console to work with the infotainment, that's a touchscreen, but as soon as you buy the Skoda Enyaq 60, you do have 13 inch, which is a massive screen and it's very nice to work with that one. Uh, behind that you do of course find a satellite uh, satnav system, you do find um, online informations like uh, just-in-time parking information, pricing at gas stations and all that stuff. And of course you can configure your home screen if you want or you can use any other things in that big screen out of this massive menu here. Overall, the Enyaq is 4,65 m long, 1,62 m high and has a wheelbase of 2,77 m. Although Skoda declares it as an SUV, the proportions are reminiscent of a station wagon or a more sporty minivan. However, the Enyaq has its very own look. The craftsmanship and the materials inside of the Enyaq are really, really nice. We do find, let's say, above the level of the center console, all soft touch, so no plastic. But on top you do find glossy materials, glossy black for instance, and um, beneath that van you do find, of course, plastic. But that's a Skoda, and if you have a look inside of the Volkswagen, that's absolutely no difference. Something that really catches your eyes are these new door handles, because they're now a side of the um, buttons to lift the windows, and this is, gives the, the whole door interior so a completely unique yeah, look. I really do like this a lot. At the rear, in addition to many horizontal lines, the sharply drawn split LED taillight stands out. Together with a large roof spoiler, they emphasize the width and makes the Enyaq standing on the road solidly. The space the Enyaq offers is really nice. So even for a tall person like me, I can really sit upright comfortably inside of my car. I do find a nice position for the steering wheel, so everything is the way it should be. The only difference is that my feet are quite high up for an SUV. But this is more like in a standard car, but it's not uncomfortable. Um, so you do really have enough space to enjoy the drive. And as you can see, I have some hat space left and I'm nearly two meters tall. How about the space behind me? We're going to find out while having a short stop. So my short stop over to see if I can sit behind me. I didn't change my seating position, but now let's check. So I'm jumping in. That is easy. Yeah, that works well. Um, I have more than enough space in front of my knees. Uh, regarding to my hat space, that's, there's nothing left, but we have this big sunroof in the car, so without that I would expect we have about 3-4 centimeters more, and that then will work. But if you see me, I'm 1 meter 95 and quite big, so if there would be somebody at the front, 1 meter 80, 1 meter 85, and the same here, that will work even for long distances. 
Regarding to the compartments, the Enyaq really features more than enough. So you do find quite big compartments in the doors, driver and co-driver. And you do have a very nicely structured center console here. At the front, you do find two opportunities to wirelessly charge your mobile phones. Behind that, you do find two cup holders. Then a bigger compartment and aside of that, you do find a very small joystick to change the gears. Uh, and behind that, you do find this yeah, very comfortable armrest with a massive compartment underneath. If you're on the rear bench, you of course find um, compartments in the doors. And if you want to have a cup holder, you use the armrest in the middle of the rear seats. For the very first time, there are so-called design collections available for a Skoda. They should be reminiscent of modern living worlds and offer matching colors and materials for the interior. You can choose from loft as standard, lodge as a particular sustainable variant, lounge with a very modern look, suite with a touch of luxury and eco suite with, amongst other things, environmentally friendly tanned leather. The seat inside of the Enyaq is really very comfortable and you can sit inside, inside of that for long, long times. What I really do like is even for tall people like me with nearly two meters height, the headrest is absolutely perfectly adjustable, something I really do enjoy. The only downside is if you're a guy who wants to drive sporty and all the time very dynamic, I think the car could deliver a bit more of support uh, with a seat but that's only something if you really want to push the car um, to the limits. Um, so if you're somebody like this, you should have a try before you order this kind of a seat. Skoda offers three different battery sizes for the Enyaq, which are 51, 58 and 77 kilowatt hours net capacity. In our case, we're driving the biggest one, and that means that car offers a range with a fully loaded battery of over 500 kilometers. If you use the middle size battery, which is 58 kilowatt hours, that means you should have about 400 kilometers of maximum range. If you want to charge the car, you can of course do that home at your household socket, but you may calculate 2.3 kilowatts 77 must go in that takes a while if you don't want to wait so long just use a standard wall box which means you can charge with up to 11 kilowatts and that means six to eight hours and the car is fully charged but if you're in a rush or if you're on a motorway you of course can do quick charging dc which means a maximum of 125 kilowatts is possible and that that means five to eighty percent of the battery in less than 40 minutes so now we're on the motorway with our Skoda Enyaq to see how the car works here. We've just started and uh, we have a figure about 22 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer driven, um, which is not a bad number. And I want to see how the car works on the motorway. As you see, we drive 130 kilometers per hour. It's quite quiet in the car. Um, if we go to 140, it's getting a bit more noise, some wind, but I think you can easily drive the car at 150 for a long, long time without losing any comfort and nevertheless the car is by the way um, uh, uh, limited at 160. Uh, the only Enyaq that can do a bit more would be the RS model which is allowed to drive 180. But as said for just cruising with 130 it's absolutely nice, very quiet, very comfortable. The Enyaq offers a maximum boot capacity with the rear seats up of 585 liters. If you fold down that bench completely, that increases up to 1,710. What I really do like with the boot is that area here is completely flat. And beneath that, you do find extra compartments, which fits perfectly, for instance, for your charging cable and other stuff, and nothing will roll around inside of your boot. If you want to tow um, uh, something with the Enyaq, you can, of course, do that. The towing capacity is one ton, and you could uh, do 75 kilograms on top of the hook, for instance, for your bicycles or anything else. With the Enyaq, you don't have to miss any simply clever solutions. You will find, for instance, things like the um, clip under the front window, or you do find the umbrella and the door. You do find very, a, lot of, a big amount of hooks here in the boot. And of course, you do find the eye scratcher, but no longer under the lid of the gas tank. You will now find it right here. And the reason for that is that this lid must stay open to charge the car so somebody could steal that. And so here it is definitely the better place. The most important assist and safety systems are always on board with the Enyaq, which means you do have a lane keeping assist, you do have emergency braking, and you do have a speed limiter and a cruise control. But um, of course, you can have a lot more, which is really nicely packed. And um, one thing I really would say it's, is important and absolutely nice to have is the so-called travel assist, which means you have uh, partly autonomous driving on board 
if you want as an optional feature. The Enyaq should take about 16 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer driven. As you can see, we didn't match that figure. We're talking about 21 something. Um, this is nothing, well, I would say that's bad, but we drove quite easy today, so I really did expect something a bit lower. That was my first short test drive with the new Skoda Enyaq. What I really do like with the car is the exterior design. I think it's quite special and unique, but I'm not sure is this an estate, is this a minivan or is this an SUV. But nevertheless, the car features loads of space at the interior for driver and co-driver as well as for the passengers. On top you get loads of luggage room and modern driver assistance safety systems as standard on top up to 13 inch touchscreen for the infotainment and always a full digital cockpit so the drive with the car is an absolute pleasure it's not a sporty car it's more a yeah, cruiser but this is something it really does very well if you want to drive more sporty just wait for the rs model um, when we talk about consumption we didn't match the figures of skoda so note 16 we used more about 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer driven but it's still a nice figure and I think more important is we will order that car for a 100 km test drive to really see how the consumption is when we do a standard drive, not a drive like we always do when we have to film the car. After the e-tron and the e-tron GT, Audi now presents with the Q4 e-tron the first fully battery electric car in the compact segment. How that car drives, how it behaves, what it delivers, how about charging and range, we're going to find out today. If you're interested in a Q4 e-tron, you have to expect a price here in Germany, which starts at about 43,000 euros. If you want the middle version, which is the Q440 e-tron, that starts at 47,500. And if you want to have the top one, it's the car that we're driving, then you have to expect something around 53,000. With a width of 1,87m, the Q4 e-tron is rather compact and typical Audi comes with a large single-frame radiator grill. For the first time, it's now possible to order Matrix LED headlights, which offer four different daytime running light signatures to choose from. The base version of the Q4 e-tron is already very nicely equipped, so you will always have a climate control on board and you will also have, for instance, this multifunctional steering wheel and a lot of other stuff. But it is not a real Audi if you can't configure a lot of extras into that car. And with that, you have to be quite careful because you can easily raise the price of the car quite up to the sky if you do click everything you may like. Uh, one option that you may think about is the so-called Edition 1 models because they do offer quite a nice package of extras but they are not very cheap so you can easily pay eight, 9,000 extras for these models as well. At the moment, you can order three different powertrains for the Q4 e-tron. The smallest one is for the Q435 e-tron, which offers you 125 kilowatts as a maximum, and that's a really powered car. The next step is the Q440 e-tron that then features 150 kilowatts, also really powered. The top version, the car we're driving, is the Q450 e-tron Quattro. And as you can hear, this is a car with two engines, so both axled are powered and that car features up to 220 kilowatt as a maximum. Important with this engine is the rear one is a permanent synchron engine. The front one is an asynchron engine, which can just run if not needed without giving you any negative effects. We talk about performance. The top version accelerates from zero to 100 km per hour in only 6.2 seconds. Top speed for all the models is 180 km per hour. When we talk about range, the winner here is the Q440 e-tron that offers you up to 520 km regardless to WLTP, but also the top version offers you a little less than 490. The materials and the craftsmanship in that car are typical Audi, so I would say on a quite high level. So you will find soft touch, you will find leather, you will find um, metal, you will find glossy black and loads of very nice surfaces and that together really gives the car a very, very nice look. Everything is really nicely made and if you're looking for plastic you will find it uh, a little bit lower than the center console, which means, yes, of course, there is plastic, but that's also very nicely made, so it looks great. It gives you, yeah, it doesn't make any disturbing noises, so that really is something I really do like inside on the car. Another thing which I really do like is how these displays and everything is orientated to the driver, which really yeah, surrounds you, and that gives you the perfect cozy feeling while driving. On the side, the Q4's large wheel catch the eye. The base version comes already on 19-inch rims. However, 20 and 21-inch alloy wheels can be ordered. 
Overall, the Q4 e-tron is 4 meter 59 long and has a wheelbase of 2 meter 76. The wheel arches are strongly emphasized by distinctive lines. Together with the high shoulders and a flat window graphic, this ensures a very dynamic look. There are no analog instruments anymore in that car, so the cockpit always features a 10.25 inch screen, which you can configure the way you want. So you can have, for instance, the uh, with a view uh, the button here, you can change between the two different views. And on top of this, you can have different informations in the center, which means you can have things like range, things like uh, infotainment or the big map or whatever you prefer to look at. On top of this, you will always have a 10 inch touchscreen for the infotainment and that infotainment features live data. You can also connect uh, with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to your mobile devices. You of course find digital radio and many, many other things. If you say 10.1 inch is not enough, you can have up to 11.6 as well. The maximum boot capacity of the Q4 e-tron is 520 liters with the rear seats up and that increases up to 1490 if you fold down the complete rear bench. But that's the normal one. If you talk about the more sporty, the e-tron Sportback, that car delivers 15 liters more with the rear seats up and 30 less with the rear seats down. Of okay. course, you can tow things with your Q4 e-tron. This is an optional feature. The maximum tow capacity is one ton for the rear wheel powered cars and 1.2 for the quadro version. The most important driver assist and safety systems are always on board as standard. For instance, you will always find a lane assist and you will also always find all the emergency braking systems. But of course, this is an Audi and you can have a lot more. Most of it is um, packed in quite nice packages. And um, so you will definitely find what you're looking for to make the car as comfortable and as safe as you want. The rear is dominated by the broad shoulders and the flat taillights connected by a light band. In addition, the e-tron signature was embossed in the rear bumper, making clear that this is an electric vehicle. The amount of space that car features here at the front row is really very nice. So me, I'm about 1 meter 95 tall. I do sit perfectly and very comfortable in the car. Everything is adjusted the way I want and I still have some head space left. Um, our car is featuring the sport seat with the integrated headrest and this is something for tall people which not fits perfectly but they are very comfortable um, but if you're a tall person you have to try because there are other optional seats available. How much space the car offers behind me we're going to find out while having a short stop. So this is the short stopover to see if I can sit behind me. I didn't change my sitting position and now ah, that doesn't look bad I think. Entering is easy, let's see. Yeah, that really works. So if you can see, I do have about one hand space in front of my knees. There is no headroom left, but still, I'm one meter 95, quite heavy, I would say, and I sit behind me. And um, yeah, that absolutely works. But the only downside is when I talk about my foot, because um, my feet are under the seat and they do not have any space left. One reason, of course, is the seat is at the lowest point because I'm quite a tall person. But I would expect a bit more, but nothing really important. An absolute highlight is for sure the new head-up display. And that really not only projects a very nice and big picture in front of the car on the road to really assure that you will always have your eyes where they belong. But on top of this, that now features augmented reality, which means you do get extra information like um, where you're going to go regarding to directions from the sat-nav or how far away is the car in front of you and if you are in the middle of the lane or not. So loads of very nice and very nicely yeah, presented informations while driving. The Q4 e-tron not arrives a moment too early on the market because there are already some competitors in the compact electric SUV segment. The Polestar 2, the Mercedes EQB and the Skoda Enyaq are also belong to this vehicle category. And the new Hyundai Ioniq is also coming soon. My test car should take up to 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer driven. And as you can see in the cockpit, we use 21.5, which is really close to the data sheet. But I have to be honest, so we drove on the motorway at the beginning of our test drive 
and there you should expect something about 24, 25, and we had a, had a speed of about 120, 130 kilometers per hour. But now, after about 110 kilometers, as you see, the average is now 21.4. And I think that really is quite a nice number. There are two different batteries available for the Q4 e-tron. So the smallest uh, engine, which is the Q435 e-tron, that one features a 52 kilowatt hour battery net capacity. The other two, they do have a 77 kilowatt hour battery on board. When we talk about charging, Audi promises 100 kilowatt as a maximum uh, charging rate for the smaller and 125 for the bigger battery if you're on a DC charger. If you go on a wall box, that's a 7.4 or 11 kilowatts. Uh, when we talk about the charging time, they say, of course, we will not reach that here because um, our car still has about 35% battery left. But if everything is perfectly set up, you're going to reach about, in 10 minutes of time, 130 kilometers of extra range. Recuperation is crucial for an electric car. And so Audi offers a standard mode, which is called D. And that is like, if you lift the foot off the pedal, it's like sailing. So no, nothing really happens. It's even less than with a combustion engine and an automatic gearbox. But on top of that, you can have B, which is a completely different mode because that one provides you with a maximum recuperation. And if you then lift your foot, the car really reduces speed massively. Um, and if you say you don't like that, you also have the opportunity in D to change the uh, between different modes while using this paddles here at the steering wheel. And so you can really adjust the level of recuperation the way you want. Regarding to the storage compartments, Audi really made their homework when we talk about the Q4 e-tron. So you will not only find standard compartments in the door at the front, in the lower part, you will also find a bottle holder here at the top, which is perfectly reachable. On top of this, you have the center console here, which is looking like it's hovering. And beneath that, you have a big compartment where you can also use wireless charging. Behind that, you do find two extra cup holders, and then you have this adjustable armrest with quite a big compartment underneath that. On top, at the front, you will find a standard glove box. Looking on the rear seats, yes, of course, you do have standard compartments in the door, but you will also find these bottle holders as well, very similar to the ones here at the front. And on top, if you need extra cup holders, you of course find two of them in the middle armrest on the rear seats as well. That was my first test drive in the new Audi Q4 50 e-tron Quattro, the actual top model of the new Audi Q4 e-tron series. And I have to say, yes, of course, that car is an absolute pleasure to drive, but I think a modern battery electric vehicle must deliver more, and this is what Audi promises. So they say that car should take up to 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer driven. And as you can see in our display, it shows us about 21, quite nice. And with that, I think a real range of about 300 up to 400 kilometers with a fully charged battery in a normal traffic situation, but depending on the drive and the weather should be easily achievable. On top of that, with that um, trim level, with that amount of extras, this car, of course, is an absolute pleasure and it's comfortable, quiet and really nice to drive. But that car got its sticker price and I expect something about 70,000 euro. But if you want to pay this, you really get something very nice to drive with.